Okay. As they say in Star Wars, this is where the fun begins. Um, the combined gas law basically takes all of the other rules that we've kind of looked at um, and it expresses it in one equation. So for here, we're going to have pressure, we're going to have volume, and we're going to have temperature in one problem. All right, so it's all going to be connected together. We're not going to change the number of um, molecules yet in, in our problem. So that's how we start off. Um, and here we have a balloon has a volume of 50 liters at 25 degrees Celsius, and it's also at 1.08 atm. What volume will it have at 0.855 atm and 10 degrees Celsius? So doing the same thing we did before, it's still PV equals nRT. Oops, one over there. Um, divided by PV equals nRT. Okay, um, and now we're doing the same thing. So 50 liters, that's volume. Um, oh, it's volume. Um, the temperature, Celsius is temperature, and then ATM is pressure. So we need volume, we need temperature, and we need pressure because here we have another volume pressure and temperature. All right, so everything else gets canceled out from the problem above. So let's cross them out. We don't need number of moles. We don't need R. That's it. We need everything else. So our equation for this problem is going to be PV equals T over P2, V2 over T2. All right, now we need to plug it in, okay? You could do this two ways. One, you can just plug everything in and then do the math. Or if you like to rearrange the equation so that what you're looking for is on one side and all the other variables are on the other side, you can do that as well. In this chapter, you really have a lot of flexibility with how you're showing your work. Um, there's, there's really just three things you need to show. So like one would be you need to show some kind of equation all right, with variables. Two, you would need to substitute with numbers. And then three, you need the answer. So as long as you can do those three things, show the equation with the variables, show it substitute with numbers, and then give me an answer, that's, that's pretty much it for at least these kind of problems here. All right, so by writing this out, we've already done one thing. Okay. All right. So let's figure out what we're looking for. So this is V1. This is T1, P1. And then what volume? So we're looking for V2. And then here we have pressure 2. And then here we have the temperature 2. Okay. So we're looking for V2. So you could, if you wanted to, figure out a way to get V2 by itself and then plug everything in, or you can just plug in the numbers and, and then solve once you've plugged it in. So it's up to you. Um, I'm going to show you both ways. All right. So first up, what we're going to do is we're going to change this around a little bit. All right. So we want to get this V2 by itself here. Um, so what you would do is you would multiply by V2 on both sides. So I would put a V2 here, and then I'll put a V2 over here. All right, um, the V2 here cancels out with this V2, all right? So now we have V2 on this side. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to get rid of these T's, right? So you want to get T1 to cancel out. So then I would put another T1 down on the bottom so that they would cancel out. And then that means I have to put a T1 on the bottom over here. So those T's would cancel, all right? So I have T1 over here on the bottom. And then over here, I still have that T2. So if I multiply by T2 on the top on both sides, then that's going to cancel that T2 out and give us this over here. So what I just did was I moved 
the T's to the other side. And then on the bottom, I have the T1 and then the P2. And the only thing that this will equal is V2, which is what we're looking for. So now you can substitute all the numbers in, and then um, you can solve that way. So let's keep going with that. And if you're like, I don't know what's going on, you can either rewind the video, watch me do it again, or just, <clears throat> just wait a second, and I'll show you another way to do it that might make more sense for you. Okay? Um, okay, so V2 equals... All right, T2. All right, so what's the second temperature? That's, let me change the color. This is the second temperature. So it's 10. Remember, we have the 273 plus 10. So the first thing we'll write down is 283. All right, that's our first temperature. I'm sorry, that's our second temperature, because that's what we're doing right now, second temperature. P1, that's this one right here. All right, so we define P1. Okay, here's P1. All right, so then we'll make that the next thing. Okay, and then we need V1. V1's the next thing. All right, V1 is up here. Okay, so it's 50. Okay, so now we have T2. P1, V1. All right, and then on the bottom, we need T1, which is this one right here. So 273 plus 25. That's going to give us an 8. That's going to give us a 9. 298 Kelvin. All right. Um, so that's our T1. And then our P2 is going to be this one, P2, second pressure. Okay, so now we wrote down all of our units. Um, so, and this is everything from over here. So we filled it all in. Now, if you go through and you cancel out everything, like the K is going to cancel out with the K. The ATM up here is going to cancel out with the ATM down here, and that's going to leave you just with liters. All right, so if I plug this into the calculator, I'm multiplying everything across the top, and then I'm hitting Enter, and then I'm dividing by 298, I'm hitting Enter, and then I'm dividing by 0.855, and then I'm hitting Enter, and that should give me 59 0.97 liters. Now, if we look back to the top for sig figs, there's three sig figs for everything, which means I have to round this to three sig figs. So five, nine, and then nine, that's going to round it up. So it's going to give us 60.0 liters. And that's the answer for that one. Uh, if you didn't get 60 from, from these numbers, again, I, I put this number in, I multiplied the X button on my calculator, put this number in, put X calculator, put the last number in. Then I hit the equals button. Then I divided it by this number, and then I hit enter on the calculator. And then I divided it by this number and hit enter again. So if you're having trouble with the calculator, you can, you can try that. You can also, when you're doing it in the calculator, put parentheses around all the numbers on the top, and then multiply them together, and then hit divide, and then put parentheses around all of the numbers on the bottom. Um, that, that could work as well. If you're having trouble with the calculator, please let me know because I'll, I'll make a tutorial on how to use it. Okay, so that's one way to solve the problem. The other way to solve the problem is to leave it like it was originally over here. So it's kind of like we're going back to P1, V1 equals T1. And that's over P2, V2 over t2 okay so again that was that was from the very beginning what we uh what we had kind of started with all right um and then all you have to do here is just substitute all the numbers so for this p1 it's still this 1.08 so let's i'm going to write it all down next to it so 1.08 atm that's p1 
V1 is up here, so it's 50.0 liters. Um, and then underneath that, it's going to be P2, which is this one. And then V2, which is, was, oh, that's what we're looking for, V2. All right, so we don't know that one. And then this would all equal T1 on the top. Um, T1 is this over here, that 25.0, which then we added, so we got 298, so that goes on top. Um, and then on the bottom, we'll have the temperature too, which is this one right here, the 10. And that ended up being 283 Kelvin. Now this might make more sense to you, which is fine. All right, it do, again, I, it doesn't matter to me how you solve these problems, okay? It's just, this is one, this is showing the equation, this is two, this is showing the substitution, and then three would be showing your answer, all right? Um, what I'm gonna do for, for, number, for this one, the one we're working on right now, is I need to show that I'm cross multiplying. So this is all gonna get cross multiplied, right? And then this is also going to get cross multiplied. All right, so let me write it out. Okay, so when you cross multiply, um, you take these numbers from the top and you multiply them by what's on the bottom across the equal sign. Okay, so that's where I got these three numbers from. And then you do the same thing for the bottom one. So for the bottom one, it is uh, 0.855 ATM. And then V2. And then 2 98 Kelvin. Okay, so we wrote this all out, and I, you just solve for the the V, um, V2. So to do that, you need to divide. So we're dividing 0.85 ATM and 298 Kelvin on both sides. Let's pause for a second and just look at this. It doesn't matter how you do it, you're going to get the same answer, okay? Now, yeah, the numbers up here are switched around, but it's multiplication. That doesn't matter. The numbers on the bottom are switched around, but again, multiplication doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer no matter how you do these problems, okay, as long as you do the math right. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility here. So again, however you want to do this, it's up to you. So I'm going to cross out some stuff. That gets crossed out. This gets crossed out. So on... The right, all we have is V2, and now you have to multiply these numbers on the top together, divide by the numbers on the bottom, and then you'll get 60.0 liters, all right? And there you go. Um, if you don't know or don't understand what's going on with something, if you could take a screenshot of the part that you don't understand, maybe use markup and write, you know, that, you know, or point to something that you don't understand, that would be really helpful for me to be able to help you guys. Um, we can always meet for Google Meet so we can go over another problem or go over other problems um, <clears throat> in case you're having some issues with this. All right, I know this was a long video. They're not always gonna be this long, um, but thanks for bearing with me and I, I really hope that this helped.